Expectations for the meeting. House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer joins us from the Hill. Leader Hoyer, good to talk to you this morning. Good morning, Carl. Good um, to be with you. Uh, I, I, I keep coming back to this idea uh, during the Super Bowl after halftime where the head coach came out with an onside kick and totally took the Colts by surprise. Is there is there anything like that in the offing from Democrats today? <laughs> I, I doubt that that's going to be the case. Uh, I think that the American public... Uh know pretty well what to expect and that is a, a discussion of one of the most serious issues confronting our country and that's the uh, cost of health care and the availability of health care to our families and uh, uh, to our businesses uh, and uh, the cost to our country uh, and uh, the Americans that I talk to all over this country uh, understand that health care needs to be reformed and I think frankly most Republicans will say the same so uh, I think the American public are going to hear a full open discussion of uh, each side's uh, views, and hopefully they'll see some uh, areas of accommodation and agreement. I'm yeah. certainly looking forward to that myself. But, but you know better than most how the bill's been polling, trending over time. And I'm wondering what, what would be wrong with some kind of surprising, attention-getting compromise, concession that shows Republicans you're serious uh, and almost shames them into compromising with you? Well, you know, you, you say that uh, many, many of the Republican ideas are included in all of the uh, the Senate bill, the House bill, and the president's uh, uh, proposed compromise, which he just put on the uh, a table on Monday. So there have been new ideas put on the table. Uh, there are, I think, significant areas of agreement in terms of discrimination against uh, uh, young people, of families, of uh, limits. Uh, many of the things that we've talked about in our bill, Republicans have talked about as well. And I think the American public are going to see that. I'm certainly hopeful that they do. And I'm hopeful that perhaps there'll be uh, uh, surprises on the Republican side as well. Frankly, there's been uh, uh, not much response uh, when I've talked to uh, some of the Republicans about what areas of real compromise there would be. Uh, now, there are obviously very limited proposals the Republicans have made, but I want to talk to, talk to you about the polling data. Yep. Uh, because I know the Republicans talk about that, and I think Americans are, are rightfully concerned that there's not agreement, there seems to be conflict, uh, they're concerned about what direction we're going and whether it's going to affect them positively or negatively. But when you ask Americans about the individual items that we're addressing, uh, uniformly we're getting 60 percent, 65 percent, 70 percent on the individual items that uh, are in the bill, uh, including the fact that uh, Americans think it needs to be comprehensive, you get very high numbers. Now, when it comes to the process and, and looking at what's happened in Washington, they're not pleased. Very frankly, I'm not pleased either. Well, what does, does that mean, though, that Americans are seeking a more incremental approach than the, the, over, the over a comprehensive bill? No, actually, the polling shows they think it needs to be a, a, a bigger rather than smaller comprehensive. They know this is a big problem. They know costs are escalating for them, for their businesses, uh, uh, for the country. Uh, they know that's not sustainable for their families. Uh, so they know that there need to be uh, big changes. They want to make sure that those changes don't adversely affect them. Right. If they got their insurance, they like it. Uh, they want to make sure that we don't take it away, and we're certainly not going to do that. Uh, you know what the bill uh, does is provide what Republicans have uh, advocated for, and that is a free market, uh, open, transparent marketplace uh, for people to purchase insurance. And if they can't afford it, it gives them some help to do so. Uh, so I think that Americans uh, basically are supportive of the principles of the bill. They're concerned about uh, uh, what I think perhaps... Uh, is the process and the confrontation and the conflict which gives them unease as it uh, as it should. Yeah. Well, how seriously should we be taking reports of a fallback proposal, a smaller bill, a quarter of the cost to covering 15 million people if in fact the big one doesn't get the support it, it needs? Well, I, obviously uh, the president uh, has indicated he wants to have a comprehensive bill to keep costs down and make uh, affordable health care available to all, of, all the Americans. Uh, that will bring costs down for everybody, including those people who have insurance now. But the president, uh, like all of us, understands that in a democracy you, you, you do the possible. You do what you can create consensus on and you can pass. Uh, so there, there is you a do backup. the best you can. So I think the president's open uh, to that. But the, the president, and I certainly agree with him, uh, believes that if we're really going to affect the reforms that, frankly, Republicans and Democrats have talked about, uh, the, the only real way you can do that is with comprehensively dealing with this problem. The Republicans, for instance, uh, uh, make health care accessible to about three more million people.
uh, we, we do it for 30 million people. Uh, that makes a substantial difference in the cost because the more people you have in the program, obviously, uh, the per person cost, the per family cost, comes down. Yeah. Uh, you know, Leader Hoyer, Republicans say, at least on the House side, uh, the vote count is not going your way. <laughs> well, I don't think that's accurate. Uh, I don't know why they say that. Uh, I don't know that they've been polling our members. We haven't heard any member uh, say that uh, they've been asked. Uh, I think we're in good shape. Well, uh, defi define good shape. I think good shape is being able to pass a bill. Today? Well, I, <laughs> not today, uh, but we can pass a bill. We passed a bill. Some people were doubtful of that. Uh, the Senate passed a bill. In fact, we've moved further than uh, uh, any of the seven presidents who have tried to move this forward have been able to do to date. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt said we needed comprehensive health care reform. Many presidents since that time have said the same, uh, Republican and Democratic uh, presidents. Uh, and uh, this bill has moved further than any bill uh, to date. Uh, so I think that uh, if and when we reach compromise, and I'm hopeful we will do that between the House and the Senate, we will move a bill. Uh, Joe? Yeah, thanks. Uh, Leader Hoyer, I know that when Republicans say a government takeover of health care, that, that uh, you know that that's a talking point, and, and and you hate to hear that. But let's say let's say that's not even true. But don't you well, think part part of the backlash from 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 the country or Massachusetts, whatever you do, there is a, a feeling among most people that that government isn't particularly effective at doing big things. Can can you at least acknowledge or concede that that's probably the underlying cause uh, for all of the angst in the American public right now? And maybe they just don't want. Uh, that much government involvement in, in, in health care. There's, there's an incremental way to do it with the private sector to make things more competitive and to address cost issues and to cover everyone with some help, but it doesn't have to be a, a, a you know, the, this, this huge uh, 70, once in 70 year holy grail that, that, uh, that certain uh, members of your party want. Well, nobody's talking about a holy grail here. Uh, this is a complicated issue and uh, we're going to make incremental change as we go along. And in fact, to some degree, this is incremental change. We're not changing the basic system of health care insurance for, in the private sector, given by private insurance companies, delivered by private doctors in private hospitals. So this is a private sector a system. All we're doing is creating a market so people can access an exchange which gives them the transparent information they need to make the best buys and bring costs down. Uh, but let me say this uh, in, in terms of this government run. Uh, I, I don't believe anybody's come up to me and said get rid of Social Security. Nobody's come up to me and said get rid of Medicare. Uh, nobody's come up, uh, no veterans come up to me and said let's get rid of the veterans uh, health care system, which of course is a system where you have uh, uh, government docs and, and government hospitals. But, 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 but Leader, a lot of people, I, I think of uh, David Walker, have said you look at the, the, the future of this country based on what our, our, our commitments are for Social Security and Medicare, and it's completely I mean, it's daunting what, what we're going to have to do and, and, and to completely, you know, expand it and add another one before we've even fixed the ones we've already got. How does, I mean, everybody wants to cover 30 million people, but is this the right way to do it without addressing the cost side first? Well, I think that, you know, it's subject to debate. I think it's the right way to do it. Uh, I think we've, uh, in both uh, the Senate and the House, we've addressed it slightly differently, but uh, uh, I think we have uh, addressed it using the private sector in a model that I think will work. But uh, let me say something about uh, uh, David Walker. He's absolutely right. We have to look very carefully uh, at both uh, all the entitlement programs uh, and this program as well and all of our other government programs to make sure that they're affordable and sustainable over the long term. I agree 100 uh, percent with David Walker on that. As a matter of fact, he doesn't like, the, he doesn't like the bill later, you know, the way that it's proposed right now. He, he, he thinks it's putting the cart before the horse. Well, I didn't say I agree with him 100 percent on that. <laughs> I said I agree with him 100 percent on the, on the proposition and, in fact, have worked very closely. Uh, with David Walker, and he would tell you that, mm -hmm. and he would, I think, tell you that uh, Steny Hoyer is one of the leading advocates uh, in the Congress for uh, taking hard view at the fiscal promises we've made and making sure they're affordable over the long term and we don't pass costs along to our children and grandchildren. Do you, so, do you, do you he's, want, he's right on that. Do you want both sides to play nice today on TV, or do you want fireworks? 
Well, I think both sides are, are going to be there. The American public wants to see, I think, correctly, uh, civil uh, discussion and debate. Uh, and both sides putting forth their proposition so the American people will get a chance to see what they're talking about, uh, what uh, each side believes will be the effect of what they're proposing. I think this is going to be good for the American public. It'll be a